There was an incident at camp today. <laughs> My face hurts. I will explain why. And we have an eyewitness. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the Buffalo Plus channel presented by Connors and Ferris, Mike Catalana, Dan Fates. I am Jenna Cottrell. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share the channel. We always appreciate it. We are putting our bodies on the line <laughs> for this channel. I could really, I could really use some likes, some comments, and some shares. Let me say. I see a mark, oh, I do. Could, is he gonna <laughs> have a black eye? So something happened today. Are you gonna have a black eye? <laughs> I may or may not have walked into a jugs machine. Which, if people don't understand what that means, Michael. They've seen the jugs machine. It basically simulates the passing or kick, you know, I guess we would say or almost like a kick of a football. You know, it's the two tires and it shoots the ball out. It sits on the sidelines. I it, would say it doesn't move. <laughs> the majority of photographers walk right around it. Most, but our Dan Fates is not like most. <laughs> How you feeling? My face hurts. <laughs> so I do want to say this. We are going to give Dan credit for self-reporting. <laughs> he came over, we were standing in the end zone, and he just announces that I walked into the jugs machine <laughs> and hit his face. So we give him credit for that. But then, you know, I'm a reporter. I, I look for somebody Big who- Big J, Big J, have, Journalist a, Hall of Famer. We have a duty, duty. and responsibility. Yeah. So I found Mike, yeah, he was on the sidelines, and well, eyewitness to the incident. You gotta tell me what you saw, eyewitness report. Eyewitness report? Well, he was clearly looking the wrong way, but attentively the wrong way, and walked smack dab into it. Oh, then turned around with what I would describe something between embarrassment and humiliation, and uh, and didn't tried to pretend that it didn't happen and kept going, but we saw it happen. It was, uh, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. I, I think there was a problem. It shouldn't have been there. I wasn't. It jumped up on you. So you're blaming somebody else? I was walking this way and just, <laughs> they, they're, they are heavy. <laughs> they're heavy machinery. Dan can spin zone this <laughs> into something else. Credit to me. Uh, what uh. You, the good news is, is there weren't a ton of fans here today. Well, Mike was there and he saw it. Right. Shout out, it was, Mike. And the unfortunate is on the sideline of the fans. If it was on the far sideline, we may not even be having this discussion. Um, but yeah. You, way to wear it. <laughs> Put my go. body on the line for this, for Buffalo Plus. You did. You did. So okay. All right. that was the... I'd say that was probably the biggest that hit was the of biggest the day. hit of the day. Second biggest hit of the day happened while they were playing. Yeah. yeah. Talk about it. Oh, uh, it was this little screen pass. They were going 11 on 11. Right off the bat, defense dominated today. Yep. Absolutely dominated. And offense had trouble getting anything going, any three teams. A little screen pass to Andy Isabella on the outside. He catches it, kind of cuts back. The play's kind of over and gets laid out by number 93. They say it's Deshaun Williams, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he went down pretty hard. Alec Anderson took exception to that. Pushing, shoving. The biggest scuffle, skirmish that we've had at camp. Um, I don't think it was a full-on fight. No helmets were thrown or punches really, but it was the most heated moment we've had so far at camp. Oh, they were angry with each other. Josh Allen was adamant afterwards. Barking. He kept you know, kind of talking to the defensive sideline about like, you know, you can't do that kind of thing. So yeah, he was, now we could see from a distance, Bobby Babich was there. Listen, Bobby's going to stick up for the defense. Yeah. He's a, he's a very vocal guy anyhow, no question. Uh, but it was funny, you know, uh, when you see that, like it gets personal, it gets personal in the way, like even in pickup basketball for that moment, Hard right? It's like, Hey, and then it's forgotten about. I think that's the way it is with the team. Yeah. But sometimes, like, there aren't a lot of big hits. That was a pretty substantial hit. Yeah, we caught up with Dorian Williams afterwards, as well as our favorite player, he's, KJ Hamler. He's more content there. coming from him soon. But we asked both of them about what kind of transpired today and where do you draw the line and where does it end? Oh, it's just us out there having a good time competing. That's all it is. 
you know, it's just a little brotherly bonding. You know, sometimes you got to duke it out a few times. It ain't nothing wrong with it. Get the juices flowing. Yeah, I mean, that's part of having fun, competing. You know, uh, I, I like to talk junk to the guys. We all like to talk junk to each other. It's all out of love. We all love each other, man. It's a good good locker room. I don't play them games. You know, it, you know, sometimes it gets a little chippy out there, but that's just football. But, you know, keep your players safe. Um, you know, if you're on the offensive side, you ride for the offense. You're on the defensive side, ride for the defense. At the end of the day, don't take it to the locker room. You know, we still brothers at the end of the day, but it's it's okay to get, you know, get all that fighting out the way too. We all understand what it is, and we all understand it's not it's nothing, no hard feelings. And if anything's wrong, it's the offense's fault? Is that the way it works? Oh, for sure. It's always their fault. <laughs> when it happens, it's the defense's fault, right? I ain't going to point no fingers. Just know, you know, it's going to get handled. Uh, Dorian <laughs> says it's always the offense's fault. Uh, if Dorian said it, then hell no. I'm sorry. Excuse my language. No, no, no. If Dorian said it, no. You see, Dorian number one on my hit list. All right. I've been look. He noticed. He noticed. So he know. He know better. Not to come for you. Yeah, he know better. Hamler's fantastic. He is great, and he pivoted quickly on allaying blame on the oh, play. Yes. There should be no doubt about it. But I do think it does get forgotten. You see him. A little bit of chirping, a little more than yeah. usual going on. I feel like at this point in camp, though, I'm not surprised by that. It's We're now, there's only two practices left at Fisher. It's been one another. There's also that, too, of, like, the offense gets to do all those things, the flashy kind of plays. Mm -hmm. And then if I were a defensive player, that would annoy me. Now, am I saying that should equate to a big hit? No, but I also get where some of that frustration might be for the defensive side of the ball. There are fights at every training camp. We're yes. seeing that, <clears throat> excuse me, we're seeing that right now. Giants have had multiple ones. Like it, it, this is where we are at the stage of the, the year where we will talk about, they just want to hit somebody, not their own teammates and all these things like that. But it was, again, Tense moment of, hey, also because Andy Isabella had to be carted back to the locker room. We saw him walk past us afterwards in practice. He had a sleeve on one of his legs. He was in discomfort. He was in pain. So that's the worst thing you hope to have happen because fights happen, yeah. but you don't want them to cause injuries to your own teammates. Yeah. And I have to say, Alec Anderson, who loves a good fight, mm -hmm. loves In contact. this case, he was not the one who started it. No. No. He, no. I won't say he finished it, he kept it going, but he had every right yeah. to take a shot at a defensive player. And listen, I mean, Isabella is like the smallest guy out there. Yeah. Yeah. I know if you're One a football player, he looks player, like somebody's brother. Hit. Yes. Yeah. Got, got to play. And he took a pretty good pop. So hopefully he's okay. Yeah. You never want to see that mm -mm. at all. I get the context of that when you talk about your, your team, I'm going to say your family, but like your family, teammate yeah. going down. Let's talk a little bit more, though, about the defense. You yeah. mentioned it earlier. Dominant day. A dominant day for the Bills' defense. A lot of energy. Uh, Daquan Hardy. I always want to call him Deontay Hardy. Yeah. With, yeah. An, with an interception. What did you make of today's defensive? What stood out to you? They were having a ball, yeah. I thought, today. Like, they got – they did, there was not a lot of those, like you said, the offense gets to celebrate. They did not have the big moments nope. today. The defense did. You can tell there was some frustration. Now, look. Josh still makes plays. There are plays that the offense does, but yeah, it was it was, it was tough sledding. It was yeah. everything they were doing second and eights, kind of is what it looked like. But everything was was tough. It, it was just one of those days. The defense was bringing a lot of pressure. It was one of those days where it's like, okay, defense is going to blitz. How does the offense react? They struggled a little bit. So I thought that was very telling. Where this was the first day, and I was as I was watching it, I'm going, man, has the defense been you know, not to say the defense has been bad because there's just been some great offensive plays. This was the first day where I thought the offense looked off and it was because of how forceful and physical yeah. the defense was. Back on Friday, I would have said that the defense won that practice yeah. at Highmark Stadium. Do you feel like it's been pretty even between the offense and the defense winning days? And what do you think that says if you do think that's the case? I think it's harder for the defense to be the equal of the offense, just by the nature of the way the game is yeah. played. Agreed. Right? There are plays sometimes where, you know, you can't own the line of scrimmage. Like, it depends on how they're playing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Josh Allen's going to make plays, and you can't hit the quarterback, yeah. which obviously makes a lot of sense. So I think it's easier for the offense to look good. But when the offense looks bad, it's really noticeable. Yeah. When I say bad, give credit to the defense. Yeah. I thought that's what it was. There was credit some plays. Credit to them. Yes, credit <laughs> to them. There was some plays. They were doing the fourth down drills. Josh rolled right, threw a beautiful ball. One to Shakir. Yep. And another one to Mac Hollins. Yep. Really nice. Like they did have a few plays, but I'm with you. Uh, outstanding coverage by Bernard 
on Kincaid over the middle. I mean, there was just a series of plays where the defense, I thought, was just dominant. I thought Benford, too, again, he got the better of Coleman today. Yeah. Again, being that physical guy. And if you watch the Dan Orlovsky interview, that press man coverage, like the way you can beat it is by stacking and your splits and, and having guys in motion. But when Benford and Coleman go at one another and Benford gets to be physical at the line of scrimmage, Benford's getting the better of that matchup. Yeah, I am looking at my notes, Jenna. I have 17 to Mac on a scramble. I have Allen to Shakir on a scramble. I have Dan versus the Jugs machine. That is, a, that is literally in my notes. <laughs> it's incredible, frame it. <laughs> anyway, one other thing of note, Alec Anderson was working in at center with the first team. He was getting some reps in with Connor McGovern. Take that for what you will. And that's break. the first time we've really seen that. Correct. Whether that's break glass in case of emergency kind of thing to have some sort of familiarity. But I think this team thinks very highly of Alec Anderson. And to be that versatile guy that can play center if he needed to be. You think about what um, the linemen that they let go away, but they did all the positions. Ryan Bates. Thank you. Yes. Great pull. Yeah, oh, I think you could be okay. some of that. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know if you were going to keep talking. No, uh, we're going to keep talking. Okay. So if this would be a good point to mention the rookie draft pick, Van Pran Pran Granger. I haven't noticed him. No. no. And I know a lot of people thought coming in, he is a rookie. And their plan is McGovern to be the center. I know a lot of times at the beginning people are like, how is he going to look? And not only has he not – shown out because they really do try to keep the first team offensive all line, line together very all yeah. the time not a single time since we've been here have i heard a question about yep. him agreed to offensive yeah. coaches to sean mcdermott to anybody doesn't mean he's not doing his job but i think a lot of times the expectations i know he came from georgia he had been a big time player but i think that is a process so when you're talking about a guy like alec anderson you need another guy who can play that position yep. if you got to drop him in so that is that is definitely worth noting. It's essentially been said of Dion, David Edwards, Connor McGovern, Osiris Torrance, and then Spencer Brown. Brown. Yep. And that's been, I would say, what, 99%? 95% yeah. at least. Yep. Yeah, yes. of, of what they've been working with. Um, I want to go back to the defense really, yep. really quickly because I think this is important. Bobby Babich was asked if he would be on the field or up in the, in the suites during games. He mentioned that he would be up in the box. <laughs> and I did love that he was like, Oh, like, what made you make that decision? He's like, have you seen me on the field? <laughs> the first day of camp, we had heard Bobby say to a ref, I'm, I got to get my ref in here. I got to get on you here because I'm not going to be here on the game days. Like, we, like yeah. the things that we hear are, are not reportable. Mm -hmm. But it was that kind of level of, like, we kind of knew right then and there, like, Bobby cannot be on the sideline yeah. trying to call plays and screaming at refs. No. So Bobby will be up top. Do you think that – to me, that says he'll probably be calling the defense. I get that feeling. He was talking about, I love the reps that Sean is giving him. Yep. Because in my opinion, I think you guys agree. Sean is I'm not saying totally giving him the keys. He has access to the keys right mm -hmm. now. Like, he is the guy that is going to, and he's certainly going to get the preseason. Sean McDermott could step in at any point if he needs to call yep. the plays. But I think he wants that to be Babbage. But he says, we go over him. We go over the plays. And I yep. think – these reps are important, very important to him. Absolutely. No doubt about it. But I think this is the time to do that. And again, if you need to make the change, now I did the again. Yeah. If you need to make the change, it's way easier to go from Bobby to Sean than the other way around. And I think that dynamic is really important yep. because, let's be real, optically, it would look a lot different if it was – McDermott and things were struggling and then it went to Babbage and then if it went back to McDermott as opposed to all right you're giving Bobby Babbage this role to succeed mm -hmm. and he takes it and makes it his own and you have the input of Sean and then if break glass in case of emergency yeah. you can go back to Sean who obviously is a phenomenal defensive coordinator and he has the input <laughs> there's no question yeah he should. of Absolutely. course yeah and he should there's Which no makes question AJ Epinesa batted a pass to the line of scrimmage yep. uh he talks about Hardy having the interception yep. great route great jump there Again, I thought the defense was flying around today. They had a ton of energy. Spencer Brown did a pretty good job on Von Miller today. They were back in pads. Uh, Von beat him once or twice, nothing crazy. But again, this was a day that belonged to the defense. And Benford jumped a route, should have had a pick six, 
didn't catch the ball. Yep. And then he had another one with Samuel where he beat Samuel to the ball but didn't hold on to yeah, it. Yeah, one on one. And yeah. it ended up back in Samuel's hands. The other thing I wanted to mention for wide receivers, I know we're going to talk about our pass. Make sure you use like, the microphone. These microphones work way better when you talk into them. Hey, don't go walking in a jugs machine. <laughs> uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is um, pass catcher of the day. I know we're going to get to, but um, MVS had a funny moment. I didn't see it, so you'd have to you explain didn't it. You so didn't say it. So it was a pass in the corner of the end zone. Uh, I think it was Rasul Douglas, and there was a little hand play, and it was back and forth. The ref was right there. It didn't make a call, and MVS grabbed the ref's flag and threw it out onto the field. <laughs> it's a jokester. <laughs> Him and Josh were, like, real close. Well, what – did Mac Holland say today about, or do we want to keep that for later? Yeah, we're well, going to save that for later. Okay, okay, uh-huh. just kidding. Okay. Just kidding. That's what more, we call a tease. Like more a little bad. breadcrumbs. That is funny, though. I respect he that. He did. I respect that. Really? It's got to. That's gotta. how he's making plays. <laughs> he was also upset. Early, uh, w- they finished with one-on-ones again. That seems to be kind of standard. The cornerbacks and the wide receivers going one-on-one. And I can't even remember the number because it wasn't a starter, it wasn't a top five corner, but was just all over his MVS. Brown. Uh, his last Kyron. name is Brown. No. I don't know, he was all over him. And, like, you could tell that MVS was just, like, not happy. It, it reminded me of when Diggs would get mad at Kyir for, like, you're holding me so much, you're not, we're not, we can't practice. Right. I can't get my rep in when you're holding me that much. Plus, it's bad practice habit like exactly. they're going to call that correct they, it's i mean it, it is funny that there are refs here like, yeah like, like there's nothing like if you think your job is unimportant on some days you could be an nfl ref at a practice for training game <laughs> <laughs> well you know in the beginning of camp it was college refs that were here sure and then later some nfl refs that yeah, come and they're still just, unimportant they, they, they're just there i'm just here so i don't get fined like yeah. they're just there they're just standing. they're getting their reps in too Getting ready to make bad calls during the year. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk pass catcher of the day. Yeah. Yeah, not much to pick from. It's the default. Yep. Stolen Kincaid. Yeah, Kincaid. He's just good He's really good day. at football. He's just really good at football. Like I said, at one play, Bernard ran with him, knocked the ball away, wasn't on the pass catcher. He catches everything. He runs great routes. He's going to lead the team in targets. I mean, yeah. and he's just good. Yeah. He's good. I, I told you that yesterday I said he and Shakir together – like, those guys are just very steady. I just think the usage rate for Kincaid is higher, and it's yeah. going to be higher. I think that's fair. I think yeah. we all see that way. Zach Davidson had another nice play again today, caught a deep pass from Mitch Trubisky, and it continues to drive up the conversation of Kenny squeak his way onto the team. I still think it's an uphill battle because of all that Quentin Morris does special teams-wise. If Zach Davidson was – three quarters of the special teamer that Quentin Morris is, tackles flying down the field, blocking all that stuff. I think we'd be having a different conversation, but you have two pass catching tight ends. They're the Dalton and Dawson. So if you, you're not gonna be asking Zach to run 10 routes a game. You don't ask Quentin to run 10 routes a game. You're there to do specific things. That's where I feel like for as good of a camp Zach Davidson has had, I think it's kind of tough for him to make this roster. If you are calling plays to the tight end, you're going to Dalton Kincaid or, like you yeah. said, sometimes Knox. If you're running two tight ends, it's with those guys. And that is not a knock on Davidson. Correct. I think it's going to be tough to keep him. But to your point, they, there is a you role for that third Brandon tight end. You could Brandon Bean's brain if you wanted to. Got it. Nailed, Nailed it. it. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Brandon Bean's beers. <laughs> <laughs> You've had quite a stretch. My face hurts. <laughs> it's killing us. Oh my gosh. It's an old dad. dad yeah, that's a good one, dad. Good I do fun. think it might bruise. I'm not yeah. trying to be dramatic. No, oh, that would be so good. There was a moment where I was like, You're like one of the football did players. I F, yes. Did I F up my teeth? There was a moment oh where I was like, Oh my gosh. How, were you it, like running? No, and I thought about running. I was like, I got to get to the other side. I was like, No, I'll just watch and walk. See, oh. this, is, this is the time to do it. Because, so, yeah, I that's used to, true. because you're at camp. And it, you you can look like a football player. We may need to use eye black. Oh my to God! Make be like, like Tyler Bass, the one side. So, a quick story. I was doing Amherst hockey games, and I was playing basketball during the week, and I got tripped up, hit the ground, had stitches on my nose, like three stitches on my nose, and I had to do the game that night. And the players looked at me like, "What is this? Three? Like it was nothing." But it fit in with zips. hockey. They yeah, call them zips. Like, yeah. 
And, and for me, it was like a whole day, like getting it done. For them, it's it, it, between uh, shifts, shifts yeah, yeah, to go out there. So, Dan, I think you've proven yourself out here. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Didn't miss like a rep. <laughs> Didn't miss a blog. <laughs> Didn't miss a blog. That's Look what we that. love about you. That's it. You're not normal in the best way. <laughs> Has anybody checked on the jugs machine? I could have broke that. <laughs> it's gone. It yeah. is red, yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, like I don't, is, that, is that sunburn or, or the jugs machine hitting my face? It's so good. <laughs> All right, anything else? Other than the fact that they're off on, this Wednesday. would be Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. And yeah, then back Fisher Wednesday, Thursday, camp ends. Final two days of camp. And then they got the game on Saturday. So, you okay over there? Yeah, I think so. Credit to Dan. It's credit to credit Dan. Credit to me. Only yeah. he can do it. All right. For Mike and Dan, I'm Jenna. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, as well as share the channel. We always appreciate it. We'll catch you next time here. Pass catcher of the day is the jugs machine. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs>